Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Great Board Gamer here with a solo playthrough of Trick Shot. Trick Shot is a hockey game for two to four players. This is not a game that has a solo system, but there is very little hidden information during the game. And if you play the basic game without some of the more advanced rules, there is no hidden information. I will be using the advanced rules and the little bit of information that is hidden between players, I'll be selecting randomly. That way, neither side has an advantage. While the game does have variants for three and four players, I believe this game would best be played either solo like I'm about to do or as a two-player game. As you can see, I have the play mat out here already. That was a optional buy during the Kickstarter. The game comes with a board that's the same size also but I really enjoy game mats, especially when I'm doing videos. The board that comes with it is a high gloss finish, so there would be a lot of glare, so it's really nice that I have a mat that's not gonna have a lot of that reflection as I'm doing the playthrough. As with most of my solo playthroughs, we'll go ahead and do the setup here, and then I'll talk about how I'm gonna handle the hidden information during the gameplay, playing this as a solo game. And as I always do, instead of front-loading the video with a whole bunch of rules, we'll go ahead and talk about the rules as they come up during normal gameplay. With that said, let's get this box out of the way and get it set up. We have the board set up and ready to go, or the game mat that is. Each player's team is on the ice. Each team consists of one center here at the face-off circle. And here is what the centers look like. We have the snap-on rings to identify which team they're for. And they're easy to tell. All the pieces are easy to tell by their size. The centers are the middle-sized players, and their sticks are down on the ice. Along with the centers, each team has two wingers. And here are the wingers for each team. And you can see their a lot smaller, skinnier players, and they have their sticks up in the air because they're skating down the ice as fast as they can. Each team has two of these large guys that are the defensemen. Here's the big guys, making sure they in, enforce for each team, and each team has a goalie. And here is our netminder. We also have six of the custom dice. These dice have one failure symbol, two of the pucks, one of the reaction symbols, and two blanks. All six dice are the same. We have arena cards and line cards for each team, which we'll go over here before we start the game in just a moment. You see the referee token up here with the clock or the round tracker, 10 total rounds. We have our score tracker for the home and away team. And we'll go ahead and have the home team be red for this game. I was mentioning each player type. We have the center who has a size of two and a speed of three, the wingers, they're the small guys, size of one, speed of three also. Our big defensemen are the largest with a size of three, a little bit slower with a speed of two. And then we have our goalie. He doesn't have a size rating because they can't be hit or throw a hit. And they can't move diagonally. And the speed is only one because they stay in the crease during the game unless you pull the goalie near the end. Before we start, we'll draw an arena card to see where we are at. And I just received this game, so you see I don't have any sleeves on the cards yet. I'll have it sleeved before I take it to the board game cafe. So the home team will draw first, and that'll tell us what arena we're playing in. And we're playing in Manhattan. And this arena has the special rule of when a penalized player is placed back on the ice, he can be placed anywhere in the neutral zone. Cool. And it shows the four attributes for Manhattan there. Aggressive, elusive, daring, playmakers. And I'll explain those in a moment. 
the home team, the red team, is Manhattan. And we are playing in their arena with that rule. And the away team will be Newark. We will not pay any attention to this rule here because we are not in their arena. And their four attributes are disrupting, defensive, dexterous, and ready. Those attributes at the top are suggestions for the line cards to use for those respective teams if you don't want to do a draft, which are some more advanced rules, which would make sense if you're playing with another person and you both have experience with the game. But for this solo playthrough, we're going to take those four attribute cards from each team's line. I've located the four cards for our Manhattan home team. Aggressive, when this card is up for that line, they can move one space before hitting. Elusive, they can make reaction moves when checked. Daring, make a free reroll. If failed, get a penalty. And Playmakers, free pass after your reaction move. I shuffled these cards and we'll put them here next to the red bench in Manhattan. And I'll grab the four cards for Newark. We have Disrupting, checked opponents may not shoot. Defensive, after you roll a X or a failure, move one defenseman. Dexterous, poke when diagonally adjacent. And ready, reaction move on X as well as on the reaction move symbol. All of those items on those cards will make much more sense once we get into the gameplay. Normally you would have that hand of cards to use, and when you made a line change you would pick which one was next, but I just shuffle them and I'll draw them for each team randomly. Whatever comes up, that's what that line bonus is. There's also two more, or one for each team, additional center figures. That way if you pull the goalie, you have the sixth player on the ice. Also, each team has three. These are their stamina markers that allow them to do re-rolls. When the players are standing up like that, facing the ice, you can't see their faces, they're ready to go. When you use it, it flips over, and they're still facing the ice, but now you can see their face and their mouths are open, they're really tired. That's the exhausted side. So they're ready to go. You can see the little water bottles up there, and then the water bottles are down on the ground when they're tired. Each team has three of those to use, and when it's time to refresh them and use them, I'll explain them. The object of the game is kind of obvious. You want to score the most points or the most goals before the end of regulation. If it's tied at the end, then we'll do some overtime. The game will be played over three periods like a regular hockey game. Each period will have ten turns, and you can see the marker here for the three periods. This is the penalty box for each team up here. And our referee token under the time shows us what part or what turn we're in during the period. We're just about ready to start. So we'll draw the first card for Manhattan and they got the playmakers. They get a free pass after their reaction move. And over here, Newark has disrupting means checked opponents may not shoot. We will roll three dice for each team to start the game to see who wins the face-off. We're looking for either pucks or reaction symbols. Whichever side rolls the most, they will gain possession of the puck. First, we'll roll for red Manhattan. And they got no symbol, so as long as Newark, the blue team, can get just one, they'll win the face-off. And they got two, and the blue team will start the game with possession. What I like to do with these extra players so I don't get confused during the game is I put whichever team is their turn, I put them in between here for me to track. So if you see me moving these around, that's what I'm doing. It helps me keep track of which players or which team's turn it is at that moment. Now I have to decide what I want to do. Right now I have the puck here with the blue center. If you are adjacent orthogonally to an opposing player, in this case I am, I am considered checked, which means I can't do any action except pass or shoot, and I'm nowhere near the net, so I would have to pass, unless I want to activate one of my other players. The actions that you can do 
or move, which I mentioned, pass, shoot. If you're on defense, you can try to do a poke check. If you have the puck, you can try and dump it in with a clear ice pass. If you're on the defensive side, you can try and hit the puck carrier. If you're outside the offensive zone and you have the puck, you can try and make a slap shot to try and score a goal. And we'll go over in depth what each of these things are and how you perform them as they occur in the game. So I need to take these dice out of the tray because the way it works is you have to choose one of two things to do, either perform an action with one of your players or do a line change. I don't want to do a line change right now because it's early in my turn and all of my bench is refreshed. I have to think about who I want to activate because you cannot activate the same player on your team twice in a row on your turn. You could activate one, another one, and then come back to that one, but you can't activate them twice in a row. So what I will do is I will pass back to my defenseman here drop pass back and when you pass it has to be in a straight line either orthogonally or diagonally and you can pass any number of squares and it has to be to one of your other players or to your goalie but you cannot pass through a space that is occupied by any other player and you can't pass to an opposing player the way it works is you select who you're going to activate, and you're going to add a die to your dice pool. You start with your first action on your turn with just one dice. You roll it to see if the action you just did was successful. The pass is still going to go either way. And I rolled a blank, which means nothing bad happened, so the pass is successful. A puck symbol would also be successful. A failure would be the X or the fail symbol. Now I can take another action because I didn't fail and end my turn. I'm gonna get ready to pass again, but first I'm gonna activate this player here and move two spaces diagonally. Players can move diagonally or orthogonally depending on their speed. The wingers and the centers have three, so they can move three squares either direction, and our defenseman can move two because of their speed of two. And that's up to, you can stop short, you don't have to go three. You can just move one or two with them, or one, two, or three with the wingers and centers, one or two with the defenseman, unless you get certain bonuses. Since I activated somebody else, I will add another die to my dice pool. And now I have to roll them both to see if my move ends my turn. And in this case, it does not. I got two puck symbols. Again, you're going to move the player anyway. It's just a matter of if you're going to end your turn on a move. That's the only bad thing that happens on a move. If you roll a failure symbol, would be that just ends your turn. Unless you want to re-roll dice by using some of your stamina. We're going to make a third action. So I'll add another die. And this time I'm going to pass over here to my winger, and we roll to see if the pass is successful. And in this case, it is not, but I will use one of my stamina tokens to re-roll. You don't re-roll blanks, but you re-roll all dice that have symbols on them. And in this case, I got a puck and a reaction symbol. I don't have any red X's, so the pass is successful, but the reaction symbol means that the red player may make a reaction move. And a reaction move can only be orthogonally. It cannot be diagonally. And it can only move one. It only has a speed of one on the reaction. And since I think this winger is going to be heading towards my net, I'm going to react with this defenseman and drop back one. And their special ability says they get a free pass after their reaction move but the red team doesn't have the puck, so that ability will not take place. I'll add another die for my next move. We passed to the winger. Receiving a pass does not constitute an action for that player. The pass came from the defenseman, so that's who we activated. So now we can activate our winger, and we'll move three into the defensive zone 
or I'm sorry, the offensive zone for the blue team. It's the red's defensive zone. And we'll see if our move is good enough. And we didn't roll any X's. So we're still going. No reactions either. So Newark's getting pretty lucky with this initial possession. We'll add a fifth die. And now I'm going to take a shot when it's this player's turn again. But he just moved, so he can't shoot right now. So we're going to move somebody else. And in anticipation of maybe a turnover occurring, I'm going to drop my defenseman back for my move. Now I have two choices here. I can either end my turn and hand it over to the red player, or I can re-roll. I would have to re-roll all three of these, and you know what, I think I will. I'll go ahead and give it a re-roll. The blanks move aside, hoping for no red X's, and I did not get any, which means my turn continues, but red will get a reaction, and he'll keep this defenseman moving back. I will add my six die. There is no limit to how many dice you have to roll if you can keep going. So once you get to six, that's all that's in the game. You just roll additional die for seven, eight, and so on. Now I'm going to take a shot at the goal. In order to take a shot, you have to be in the offensive zone, which I am. I'm past the blue line. And you have to have a clear path to the net. And if I'm shooting diagonally, it's going to go into the net. If the goalie was here, I could not attempt the shot because I do not have a clear path to the net. And it has to follow either diagonal, straight, or orthogonally. You couldn't be here and then shoot this way because you're not following the lines diagonally or orthogonally. We'll see if I can score a goal here on my first possession. We have six dice to roll and only one re-roll available. Not awful, because I want to try and score a goal. I'm going to re-roll, and I have to re-roll all four of these because they have symbols on them. And I'm hoping for no red X's. And I did not get any. Wow, that is lucky. So our winger shoots and will score a goal. It makes it past the goalie. Some things would happen if I rolled any red X's and any puck symbols along with those red X's, then there would be um, rebound rolls. But I'm sure we'll have that happen, so I'll explain that when they do. But our home team has given up a goal to the visitors from Newark. That was a quick strike by Newark. Got on the board early. After a goal, or if the goalie makes a save and freezes the puck. You're gonna reset the board, which means you're gonna put them back in their starting position for the face-off. The puck will go in the middle. The three stamina tokens will be returned to their ready side, and then we will roll for face-off. In the rule book, it does not say to make a line change when resetting the board. So we'll roll for the face-off again, starting with the home team. Those do not count, so they rolled no symbols again, which means Newark might get the puck again, and they do not. Since they're tied, we re-roll all three for each team. Two symbols for the home team. Can Newark take the puck? Again, we are tied. Two symbols each that are not X's. We keep going. That die is kind of leaning, but it was going to fall onto that puck, so they have one. Newark takes the puck back again and maintains possession after. Since the same team that scored got the puck back, it's still the same turn. We do not move the turn marker. If Manhattan, the home team, would have gained possession, we would move the turn marker because we'd be on another player's turn at that point. So we keep going with the current turn. We'll try something a little different this time. We're going to have to roll one die. We're going to push our winger out to the side successfully. We'll add a die. We'll go ahead and shoot. Not shoot, I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and pass. 
successfully, but we'll have a reaction. We'll have this winger slide. I'm sorry, you can't move diagonally for a reaction. We'll have this winger slide to the left. Try and get a little bit closer to that puck carrier. He moved, so we can't activate that player again. We will move our center three in case we need to receive a pass. Now we failed. We will use one of our stamina tokens. I recovered the die from the floor and we failed again. And I don't want to waste, well, do I want to waste another stamina and be down to one? No. So that will be the end of my turn. Next, it will be the red player's turn. Now the turn marker will move. The red player will start off with one die in their pool. And we're going to attempt to take that puck away. We're going to do a poke check with our winger. We need to get that puck so we can go towards the offensive zone. We can't poke check when we're diagonal. You can only poke check when you're orthogonal, but we can attempt to hit. When you're attempting a hit on the puck carrier, you can do the hit if you have enough speed and your move would place you into the same spot as the player. For example, if I was way back here and I can only move three, I can't do a hit because I can't get to that spot that the puck carrier is in, but I'm starting right next to the player. Also, you have to either be bigger or the same size as the player that you are checking or trying to hit, I'm sorry, that you're hitting. In this case, it's winger on winger, so the hit can, will take place. Whether it's successful or not, the hit will take place, and since it's up against the boards, this player will just slide that way. Normally they move one space back, but since they're against the boards, they will just move along the boards there. Now we'll see if we take the puck from them, if we're successful. We don't want a red X here. If you're hitting and you roll an X, you don't get to re-roll because that's a penalty. And I am successful. I hit the puck carrier and took possession away. Now I did an action with that player. So I will move the red center forward. Can't cross into the offensive zone yet because the puck has not made it there yet. I will use one of my stamina tokens to re-roll. Good there. We'll add a die. That player is currently checked, so they can't do anything but pass or shoot, can't shoot, not in the offensive zone, and does not have anyone to pass to. So I need to set something up. I'll drop this defenseman back one to be able to receive a pass here, but let's see if we're successful, and we are, but blue will get a reaction, and I take that back. Right now I could not shoot if I was checked and again, checking is if there is an opposing player orthogony from you because this line is disrupting and checked opponents may not shoot. So that is successful. Red will get a reaction, or I'm sorry, blue will get a reaction move. We'll have this defenseman drop back one for the reaction, add another die. I got to get rid of that puck because I can't do anything with that player. So we'll do a pass back and no failure symbols, so the pass is successful. Blue will get a reaction, and we'll move this player right over. So now they're checking, which means that player can't do anything but pass. I still have two stamina tokens. I will move my defenseman forward two to get in position for a pass. I will fail there. So we'll use one more reroll. And again, I have to reroll all of them. No chances there. That's going to end my turn. I don't want to use my last stamina token to reroll. That will end the red player's turn. Blue is up next. The turn marker slides down again. Four minutes into the first period. 
blue player is already adjacent to the puck carrier. So we're going to go ahead and attempt a poke check. I can't do a hit because the winger is smaller than that defenseman. We are successful. We poke checked and took the puck from the defenseman. They are already activated. We need to get someone in position to receive a pass. So we'll add a die to the dice pool. And we want a winger. So we'll drop back. That'll put us in a diagonal line. We're going to use a stamina token to re-roll. Successfully. But the red team will get a reaction. And this winger can see what's going on here. So the Manhattan winger moved in position. See that pass coming. The player's telegraphing it. We're going to add another die. And we're going to... <laughs> I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm actually moving against... I should be heading forward here. That's pretty funny. I didn't even see what I was doing there. All right. So we change tactics. Whoever was watching that up to this point before I realized that, I was like, why is he going backwards? Well, because I wasn't paying attention. That's why. So we'll move forward one. Get ready to obtain or to receive a pass. That one left the dice tray, so I re-roll it. No problem there. The move is successful. Red will get a reaction. This defenseman is going to drop back. We don't want to drop this defenseman back because then that player would be unchecked and be able to move. We'll add our die. We'll make this pass. That's a dangerous pass between two defensemen. It is successful, but the Manhattan players will get a reaction. And this time I will... Drop that defenseman back. Add a die. We'll move this. Oh no, I passed with that player. So this player can't move. Well, I've created quite a mess for myself here. Since I don't have anyone to pass to, I could just pass it right back, which might actually be a good idea because if I pass it back, he's currently not checked. But no, I'm going to dump the puck in. In order to dump the puck in, it is a pass action. It'll follow the pass action rules. And when you do so, you have to be in the neutral zone between the blue lines here. And you're going to pass to an empty square. And it has to either be another square in the neutral zone. Or it has to be touching the blue line. Which means you can aim at these squares that are just on the other side of the blue line. We'll go ahead and... I will pass to this empty square here. And when you do a clear ice pass like that, you will add two dice to your pool. I ran out of dice, so I'll have to roll an extra one. And the puck will bounce and continue to go in that direction for every puck symbol that is rolled. Let me roll this blank one as the seventh. So the players will get a reaction. It's going to bounce. Oops, can't see that on camera. It's going to bounce three. It'll bounce right past that player. One, two, three, and continue in that direction and land up against the boards in the offensive zone. This means my turn will end because I'm not going to re-roll. And they do get a reaction. This defenseman's going to slide over and start heading towards the puck. That ends my turn. The timer will move. Red player will take over. I haven't made any line changes yet. It doesn't really mean that these same lines have been out there for six minutes. It just means I don't have different cards up right now. Thematically, the teams are still popping players in and out. This is just kind of a snapshot of what's happening at that moment. The home team is headed towards that puck. I only have one re-roll available so I might want to do a line change here to get those back same with the Newark team first move will be two towards the puck with my defenseman 